Well, in an effort to try and get some YouTube engagement, let's talk about a little controversial topic tonight. These uh, wire piercing probes. Uh, a lot of people pretty much don't want to touch them. The reason being, uh, you know, in automotive settings, a lot of times you have wire that you don't want to expose to anything on just because of either humidity or direct water it's going to corrode after an amount of time of open up to it um so uh, some shops don't even let you use them and I, i'm here to say that well yeah you definitely want to be careful with the stupid things but there is a time and a place for them and honestly if, if you're just a do it at home guy trying to get your own stuff going compared to trying to do uh back probing or taking apart uh, wiring harnesses, th these things are pretty good. And further to the point, you know, whether or not you're really going to see a corrosion issue in a wire, yeah, it's not a good idea to do it, but you'll probably be fine two-thirds of the time. So, you know, in a pinch or something, you're getting frustrated just trying to diagnose. Th these come, can come in handy. And the other thing to keep in mind is, like, so like this set's, I think, 10 bucks on Amazon. They actually make pretty good back probes as well. So just because you're buying them as a piercing kit, all it really is is a nice sheath for this pin to hold it in place. And then you have a good back probe. And that's what I recommend is to, to whenever possible, use a T-pin or a back probe and get, get to the rear end of that connector and just get an electrical connection that way. But that being said, it's not always possible. So this particular set, it, it's a relatively cheap one. Again, around 10 bucks. I have better ones. I, I have more electronic grade ones that are around 30 bucks. Um, Fluke makes a really good pair. But but to be honest, this stuff is good enough, um, especially for non-high signal quality stuff. Um, and what I mean by that is, you know, if you're going to be looking on an oscilloscope or very concerned about the exact wavelength or peak Th then we're talking kind of almost like an oscilloscope probe where these are really just for being able to see basic signals and voltages such as what you'd see on a vehicle it's, it's not like you're going to be trying to decode something out the can bus with these so the basic idea here is these actually just plug right into banana jacks um, and my preferred method is just to uh, use something fairly small gauge so you don't get dumb and try and put a lot of current through it so as a demonstration i have a little bit of 18 gauge Automotive wire here. Brown is going to be my common. You're just connected to the wire side. And then we'll just verify with this probe. Got a good continuity there. And then obviously, you know, so here's your bare pin. Having a good meter is going to help a lot with this. Uh, but yeah, let's, let's put that arm on it. And yeah, you'll probably end up stabbing yourself with these things eventually. But all I'm going to do for the application here is I'm, I'm just going to lightly press it on. Um, so you can see that pin there. I'm just going to go till I get a signal. And I'm going to let go. And that should be enough. I don't want to go any farther than that. All, all I want to do is get that initial poke in there. It's, it's not going to go through the other side then. It's not going to spread the wire apart. Um, that is really the best way to do it. It's just good enough. And then verify with your meter You know that you still have a good connection. Now, the one frustration with this, of course, and a good reason why these things aren't the be-all, end-all, is it, it might pull off over time. But I, I think this is the best way to do it. It's the, the least evasive when we're done. And you'll probably be probing multiple wires. I mean, who knows? Again, back probe if possible. Let's just get some of this liquid tape. I'm sure you can find a chemical that would essentially give you the same insulating properties, but... This stuff's cheap enough. I think it's about 4 or $5 for 4 ounces. If you are buying any sort of wire piercing, you, you really got to get this. Electrical tape will work in a pinch, but it, it's really not good enough. And to me, um, even though this one's white, they all smell like whiteout to me. So it'll, it'll be a very familiar scent. It's a very similar consistency to whiteout, where it's, it's fairly liquid at first. Um, but over time, it does, I don't want to say harden, but it cures to rubber. And it, it's actually still pliable at that point unlike whiteout. And this is just the same brush style that you're all used to. This stuff will obviously dry pretty well, so you gotta be careful to clean out the threads a decent amount, otherwise it's gonna come back and all hard on you. Uh, but not a big deal. Pick one of these up. It'll save you so many different ways. I also like putting on just bare metal if I, you know, I'm cutting my hand on something. Or like maybe if you have a, a hood detach latch that's hard to find, you know, it it's, gives you a little bit of a texture difference that makes it easier to find. But anyways, hey, you, you just apply a little bit of that to the wire, 
and you're going to be set. I, th I think I'm going to go into a whole series of these different types of probes that are out there. You know, for 10, 15 bucks, pick up some of these cheap ones, realize their limitations, realize that they're kind of a hacky way of doing it. Don't be afraid to go there if you need to. If it, if it means having to butcher a connector and solder it back on, maybe this is less evasive way to do it in the long run. My, my preferred method would be, if possible, when you go to the junkyard, clip off a couple of the connectors that um, you use on a common basis for that vehicle and keep them with you and that way you can just put a whole connector on it instead of having to um, back probe it and you will see that a lot of shops will scold people especially newer guys for using these I'm telling you from the from the engineering and the OEM perspective we don't do high volume we just do things and usually there's a lot of pressure to get things diagnosed quickly you have to replace the whole harness later that 50 bucks for the harness might be worth the hour or two you're wasting trying to troubleshoot it um, so yeah, get a set of these. I, I think you'll be happy with them. And just realize that you have to take the precautions to seal up the holes afterwards. Well, I think I rambled on long enough about these suckers. Get a pair. I'll, I'll, I'll put a link for them. Consider getting some bigger ones if you have higher current applications. But really, this is for signal probing, not for anything with current going through it. Thanks.